and I'm going to start recording. Ah, thank you. I was about ready to start recording. Um, so we're recording this. this is the Hyperledger Sawtooth um, April meeting. And I apologize for not having a meeting agenda out prior because I just got back from traveling in Asia where I turned my phone off for the first time in five years for almost three weeks. So um, purpose today is to work through everything that we've been working through um, and, and continue the momentum that we had uh, during the last uh, two meetings. It looks like we've got a lot of things going on right now. Um, but I think the most important thing right now is who should prepare the quarterly report because we do need to keep ourselves um, going with the Hyperledger Foundation. And Sean, I, I volunteered to help you, but I've never done one of those before. Um, and uh, later in the day, I can uh, work on that and, and get that submitted so that we're not late on that. Um, are there any uh, particular things that need to be done, Sean? For that? Well, the, the template's fairly easy. Um, and if you ping me, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if I have anything to add to it. Um, okay. I'll work through the template and I'll, I'll ping you uh, and make sure that the, I've got everything on there. Uh, but we do want to make sure we keep those current uh, because they are sunsetting several different um, projects. And I want to make sure that we keep ours uh, lively enough that uh, we are kept by the Hyperledger Foundation and we're an active project. <clears throat> and judging by um, glancing very quickly, it looks like we've got a lot of uh, uh, conversations still happening. Um, that was the only thing that I had, and I apologize for being late on, on this meeting. Um, are there specific changes or specific topics that anybody wants to discuss on this meeting today? Well, I think the uh, two things, there's probably uh, talk for a minute about Kind of attack on the the testing stuff, or at least just what I have in mind, given what we talked about on the chat line. Then we should talk about the the main branch switch around that we were talking about last time, and see if there's a tangible step that we need to do. And then I think we probably also need to talk about uh, what to do about poet, actually, because I haven't because there's that set of questions going on there. Um, and I just personally haven't dug into Poet in a while, but we can. Okay, so, so I got main branch and Poet. Um, what was the other one that you... The, lo the long-running testing stuff. I, just, I should probably just throw I just mean, I'll throw out the approach I'm going to take given what John just told me today. Okay, let's start with the main branch. Um, are there tangible steps that we need to be taking right now in order to um, merge in any of the code on there? Well, it's not the merge, right? Last time we discussed around switching around the uh, the the current main is the the one that is the two dot x driving thing, and we we're talking about switching to one dot three as the main and swapping things around again i don't really have an opinion about whether we do that but if we're going to do it we, sh we should move it along rather than just talk about it. yeah i yeah. don't have any time to kind of work on it but i think the next step um because i was i was gone for a good part of uh of this month but um uh, i think i think a good next step is probably to go through uh, main and see what what in there should be um, ported over to the one three branch. 
Should we have a call for this or just continue to um, make comments up on uh, Discord? My preference is Discord. Okay, then who's gonna let's let's take another approach on it. Who's uh who besides you, Sean, is gonna draw the short straw for dealing with this? Probably need at least one other person just to back things off of. Oh dear! Is, because I is there another... because I spoke. It's me. <laughs> yeah, Kevin yes. was out of mind. <laughs> yes, I think you just Not did. So result. Ke <laughs> Kevin and Sean um, will. Um, so you guys can work through the pieces on Discord. Yeah. Okay. So I think you guys are a. I don't think Bill, you have any time in order to do that. In the next couple of weeks, I have like negative time because of our launch. Um, after that, I can spend some time. But okay, right now I have basically negative time. My, my okay. general thought is try to bring those two branches together as much as possible and then see if replacing main makes the most sense or just applying a diff. I mean, is there um, is there a hyperledger policy for just like switching the default branch for the one dash three branch and leaving? No. No. You can. Well, we can start it, with yeah. that, right? You know, you can either do it via the dot GitHub settings dot YAML, um, which would be the preferred way to do it, uh, or you can do it through the UI. Through the YAML, but the okay. We should, we should start with that, and then we can just that just eases the PR creating right and targets everything. But then, yeah, let's well identify I that. I think it fits. It depends if if the end result, like I was saying, like if we're switching, if we're actually like resetting the branch, branch, that would make sense. If we can kind of get to the same place with just applying a diff on the main branch to prevent that, um, then that would be somewhat less disruptive are we talking about a cherry pick yeah like maybe reserting uh like reverting specific commits or applying the the reverse on on some of the some of the things it depends it depends how closely we can bring it together though whether that will make sense or not I, I guess uh, another option well, would be to uh, create a new main branch at the point of uh, departure. You know, call it. You know, uh, you know, get switch dash c. You know, new dash main or whatever, and then cherry pick what you want from each branch in order, uh, and then you know leave the old one as an artifact. But if your current 1.3 branch is the one that you want to be main, is is that true? The, the everything in, in the 1.3 branch would be the new main. Well, I think the ideal would be 1.3 with anything that we need to to add to it from main, and so that's just that's just a little bit of analysis that we need to like look through. Um, put things over there's there's some pieces that got rewritten in Rust uh, that we should bring over. Um, and then there's other pieces uh, uh, of that work uh, that uh, disabled features, and that's the stuff that we would want to revert. Um, from like a history perspective, um, one three is essentially, uh, you know, an, an ancestor of main in a lot of ways because there's not that many uh, deviations in the one three branch um, so that process ends up looking similar to what you were you were describing okay um, well um it's close let me ask a different question um what is the uh I, I guess what is the downside of 
just making the one three the default branch and making everything else an ancestor of that instead of calling it main you mean right i think it would be pretty unexpected coming to the project especially if we still had a main that existed so i i feel like renaming it's not necessarily um you know, the biggest biggest deal i think that so, the, 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 the question is whether we, we maintain the current you know whether we maintain the current history or not or if we can get them clean and then it's like oh we just need to like revert this couple this, these few things i'd rather have the history in maine as it currently is um Simply because then we don't. Even if we revert, revert the work, we can we can look back and say, okay, at this one point in time, this is so the approach that we were doing. If we renamed main to you know main dash old and renamed one dot three to main, um, are we ninety percent of the way there? I think that's one possible outcome. So I'm saying like the, it's either that or it is applying a patch to main. So if I we go through the good. exercise of like moving all this stuff from main to one three, um, you know, cherry picking stuff and, and reapplying it and kind of just going through um, that that exercise of applying it on the other branch, um, it'll be pretty clear at the at the end of that which we want to do. So we need to do that exercise anyway, so. All right, well, I, you know, don't have a preference. Um, just let me know what uh, I can do to enable it. Yeah, so I think a, a good goal for like the short term is just um, starting to work through that branch and pull things over. Um, you know, we don't necessarily need to be in a rush to switch the branches, but uh, I, I agree with Kevin, you know, some progress on it uh, would be nice, so. Okay, let's go to <clears throat> uh, let Kevin and Sean, can you guys um, continue a discussion up on um, Discord? and start yeah. working on that. I'd like to make some progress on that. Um, so we've got something that people see all the um, various things that have happened to this project over the last 18 months. Because um, Sean's made some great moves, but they're not connected to the one three. And I'd like all that merged in if we could. So that, uh, you know, we can start. I think what we need to do is start really making some marketing style moves in order to bring more people in. And I think this is the first step once we do this, uh, because I think that the blockchains appear to be going more and more into private mode um, for all of the, uh, what's happening right now. So I, I think we have a chance to um, expand our base. And if not, then, you know, we have to look at whether it's a viable project beyond there. So, um, let's try to make this a priority over the next month and see if uh, you two guys, and I think Bill and I can shake you once we get our, our um, release out. He and I both took time off at the same time because uh, we were supposed to, we're, we're behind on our release date and our vacations couldn't be moved. So we shifted everything, but, um, and see if we can't get some additional people. Um, poet. Um, anything else on the main first before I, I move on to poet? Um, I mean, most people are using, and why am I having a uh, word blip this morning? Um, what's what's our main consensus? Considering I was in that this morning, uh, most people PBFT. are not using po PBFT. Thank you, Bill. Um, uh, most projects are using PBFT on this. Uh, do we want to do anything with Poet? A Poet is 
the heart and soul of the initial project was Poet. But I don't believe Poet has been updated in years at this point. And there were issues with it, which is why PBFT um, came out. Do we want to do anything or do we want to sunset Poet and make that public so that people don't try to um, start using Poet again? Well, I think it's Gotcha. I was going to add some history and background. <laughs> um, so proper poet, you know, Intel's vision uh, requires SGX. That code's been right. broken forever. Like you can't compile it. They changed the SDK. It never got upgraded. It's been that way for years. Um, so the poet that we're talking about probably isn't that because that's like a pretty much a complete rewrite against whatever the current uh, Intel SDK would be. Um, so what we're really talking about is Poet Simulator, the code that um, that we use when we're not on an SGX system, right? And that that's really the one that uh, most people would be using. Like if it's in a Docker container, it's certainly not the actual Poet <laughs> implementation. It's a simulator. What that means is there's absolutely no security. Like, um, so from from like, uh, you know, it's got some some attributes to it that would like lend some security characteristics, but it's um, uh, it doesn't achieve what Poet sets out to achieve, um, and. Uh, certainly shouldn't be used in any any production sense. Um, yeah, I, and I agree because on and you can't even um, drive it to anybody's enclave. And I wouldn't say Intel's enclave is is secure enclave has um, got any kind of market share compared to some of the others that are out there. So I, I, I think it'd be best, at least from my perspective, to sunset poet and um, make a statement up on the website. Maybe we can get that put up there that um, PBFT is the supported consensus for this. So let's, yeah. these, just sorry, I oh, didn't mean to interrupt it. Yeah, Go ahead. Friend. Go ahead. So I think it's important for the project to have, uh, I'm using the wrong term, but a sort of uh, a, large scaling proof of work style is Nakamoto style uh, consensus algorithm running. And if we sunset poet, we don't actually have one anymore. The poets uh, simulator or CFT, I think it was called for a while, is good enough to actually test out those scenarios. Now, I agree, uh, the SDX thing is a bit of a mess. I think there's uh, there's interesting stuff around Rust libraries to abstract away the basically all the enclaves, SDX being one of where perhaps we can actually make a more stable uh, version without having to deal with the low level Intel primitives again, uh, where we could actually update that. The other option is to me, if you're going to maintain some sort of massive scaling consensus on there, the other option is to implement something from scratch uh, or something else, uh, some other consensus algorithm to do it. The poet has the advantage of not, you know, burning electrons. But I think we we shouldn't just cold pull the plug on it without considering a, a replacement or remediation of it. No, and that's a really good and point, and that's the only reason it's still there, is, is if it's removed, the, the core of Sawtooth will, will lose the ability, because we won't be able to test it, um, to handle forking consensus. And the thing that uh, Sawtooth, uh, you know, one of the things that Sawtooth has going for it is it's probably the only distributed ledger uh, that uh, can support both. That's a good point, right? That isn't like focused on one model or the or the other. Um, uh, and that's very very much why it, why it's been there. So so maybe it's a, a difference between, you know, what what do we 
push people towards on the website versus, you know, what do we keep for testing purposes? You know, Sean, what happened to your consensus switch or would that fit into the main um, that you were working on? Uh, the consensus library project? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's there, it supports, uh, um, it, it doesn't even have full support for PBFT at the moment. Um, it's got a uh, two-phase commit. Really the, 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 I think to like fit it in, like and keep everything working with, it was not like uh, my previous uh, focus um, uh, would be to use, use that because that, that's really the idea is, can we create a uh, Rust library that, and this is called Augrin, by the way. It's up on the, um, okay. it is up on GitHub. Um, but the idea is uh, to very cleanly separate the algorithm code from all the networking and like all the other stuff. Um, the end goal, the end idea being, you know, if we could create this library, maybe we could get researchers to um, use its interfaces to implement um, future consensus algorithms. Because the current the current state is kind of uh, um, ha has been, you know, so uh, uh, when researchers are, are are doing this work, they inevitably like implement the entire stack, right? Um, and it makes it less usable, but it's also a lot more work. So that was the idea of like that, uh, that library. Um, that is, uh, it's an area that I remain interested in, um, but it's, uh, you could think of it as in, in terms of like uh, Sachi's architecture uh, that we could have a consensus engine that uh, uh, uses that library. If you will. So if we wanted two phase commit, for example, that we can uh, write a consensus engine in Rust that uses that library and kind of provides all the networking and uh, soft toothisms and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, so the forking is is what you need out there in order to testing. I'm I'm trying to think. We built a consensus for the NSF that we published the the code on almost two years ago now, um, but it's not forking ideally. Um, I was trying to think if there's another consensus that would go in there that would give you that ability to test against it that wouldn't be as um, non-maintained as that, that poet, or do we just put up something that says um, on there, uh, the site that we only maintain it for testing purposes? Well, yeah. the, the thing I'm concerned about is, a, is mixing up poet, the algorithm with poet SGX, the implementation that suffered because implementing stuff on SGX is very, very hard and hard to maintain over time. So I'm wondering, right solution should be actually first let's take a look at it and see if can it be can it be lifted into something that is more maintainable because that's why it's that's why it's in bad shape right because sgx moved on and into weird and different directions and it was complicated well that's only the sgx code though that's which yeah, yeah honestly yeah. we've never deployed anywhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. any of us because like SGX isn't even, or wasn't at the time when we were doing SGX stuff, wasn't even on like any server stuff. There was no cloud support, mm -hmm. nothing. So like the only place I know that it's ever really run is on Nooks. Um, but that that was, you know, that was a long time ago. So really when we're talking, like- uh, when It's we're a secure about, time. You oh, need some yeah. secure time, right? When we're talking about Poe, we're really talking about the simulator. Uh, I just want to call that out because it's not it's not a thing that should be used in production. Um, so driving, 
people to it under, you know, and kind of advertising it as, you know, some solution that they should use, we really shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm fine with, with not driving to it. I'm more just thinking of yeah. but we should actually give it a kick in the butt and figure out what the right strategy is, right? The two weaknesses being one, the secure and safe implementation isn't actually remotely practical as you just highlighted. Yeah, and I suspect if there- The other one is the simulator, right? I, I suspect if there's problems running well. the, the simulator, it's probably a change in Python libraries. And so it's probably like that level sure. of like remediation is like go through and like, uh, you know, update things or pin versions or, or, or whatever. Um, and then, and then run it through the integration tests. Um, you know, it's probably, uh, you know, from a maintainability perspective, um, uh, there's, I, I wouldn't expect it to just break unless we're doing some pretty um, big changes in uh, the validator, like we're changing that contract, then like that's you know going to become a source of pain in terms of keeping uh, poet working because it makes a lot of assumptions or the not assumptions, but you know there's a the contract between the two is um, is there right? So like um, so in, in terms of it being uh, broken now, I I would just assume that that's um, either Python libraries or even Docker image problems, um, and and not like you know we need to go through and like rewrite a bunch of poet code. So then we just need a volunteer to to go and take a look through it. And I'm staring at you, Joseph. Yeah, so if you want yeah, to, up for that, no problem. I think that could even widen to like, really, we just need to know that the stuff that we're saying on the website like works. Um, I think, well, it's, it's an interesting thing because I wonder, just thinking about the guy who specifically asked me a question, when I went through with that other guy, I can't remember his name, is there was uh, the two things that were going on was that the documentation pointed to the main versions of the files, which didn't have the transaction processors, obviously, but he's running it versus time. Anyway, there's just documentation missing the first one. And then the Docker Compose version has shifted and weirdly has syntax that doesn't carry from one to the other. So there, 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 there's a bunch of stuff like that. I mean, we're going through and looking, or at least flagging up when we see it. Okay, so Joseph, will you take that challenge? Yep, sounds good. Okay, so Joseph's gonna take a look at the uh, poet code and see if we can just update it and make it uh, more stable. Anything else we need to talk? Just get main working again. Okay. On poet there. There's a logical follow on to that. Is it probably the same is true of Raft? I don't know how much appetite anybody has to deal with the Raft, but when there's PBFT sitting right next to it. Uh, I thought that we decommissioned Raft. Did we not do that? We could do that. Counter to all this, I am willing to, I am willing to step aside and let Raft, Raft be sunset. I don't think anybody really is. Uh, oh. The PBFT implementation is better than the Raft implementation in terms of stability and stuff, and so there's not uh, there's not a lot that like testing with Raft is going to tell us that testing with yeah. PBFT wouldn't. So it's not kind of the same same set of problems. Um, uh, we may not have officially done it uh, uh, sunset yet. One of the um, things that we were thinking for a long time is that we shouldn't really uh, decommission components until we did like a 
at least a point release to say like, okay, that was, you know, poet or raft or whatever was a one, two thing. We're on one, three now, it's no longer a thing. Um, so that it wasn't confusing, but maybe that's too high of a bar. Um, I think we had the same thing with uh, the SDKs. I think we should pair them back. Uh, we've done a little of that already. But... Well, let's decommission that and, and make that a, uh, um, if it's, I can go through the documentation um, uh, and make sure it's not mentioned in there and then I'll come up with something to put up on the website. So um, we'll make that official. Um, as we go through here. Okay. Anything else on consensuses? Long running testing. Uh, how are you working on that, Kevin? Well, I just wanted to spend two minutes talking about it today, uh, given that it picked up again. The So what I have in mind, Sean, is not to use the LR merge stuff, but to, to do from scratch. And yeah, reason being is that uh, we've got some pretty good helm charts we can put forward and that'll scale up very easily to whatever we want. And then enhance it to run some load drivers uh, in various ways to go for it. And I think that'll be a good strategy, unless there's some other capability that it has that we don't know about. May actually move the load drivers into a helm test scenario. So that it's I mean, it has, a, it has a ton of capabilities, but um, mm -hmm. the tool overall is like aging. Um, a lot of what, a lot of the value that we got out of uh, running those environments was um, was was graphing everything. Um, we use Grafana to like graph the sy system metrics and stuff like that. That's all stuff that doesn't make any sense with Docker because it's all ends up being less interesting, but. Um, but maybe there's some some statistics that like do make sense uh, that weren't like the ones that we were looking at. Um, but then trying to get some uh, statistics out of out of Sawtooth, those are uh, really useful uh, as well to like kind of be able to see, you know, kind of visually like okay, here's 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 where it, it started to deviate deviate and. Uh, uh, you know, if you have 20, 20 nodes, you need to know, okay, when, when did that one node like stop progressing? Um, things like that. So none of that is like really the, that tool, um, but that's one of the things that, uh, you know, uh, we would look at every day. So it's like, okay, how's the, how's the network going? Um, the graph so it's made it super obvious whether things were healthy or not yeah but i think right now so that's, we just need a strategy to keep get it updated and kevin if you're willing to drop all that code in there let's do that and see how that is i mean we're not gonna um if it doesn't work we can we can revert back but let's see if we can't get something up and going that's up to date on this is that it's, uh, agreeable? Yeah, it's fine. And then, so you're just talking about the pulling, Sean, you're just talking about pulling up the, doing the influx and open TSDB and, and the default dashboard, or was there a specific dashboard for Grafana? I shouldn't say default, let's say the, the dashboard that's in Contrib. Is that the one? Uh, it was probably similar to that one that's in Contrib. Managing those dashboards was like kind of an ongoing battle. <laughs> Because it's not really meant to be managed like that, but um, you know, importing and exporting them, and uh, it had a lot of issues. But it's probably pretty close to what uh, what's there. Um, 
Uh, I think the okay, one let's, that's let's... there, you can stand up in a Docker container. So, um, yeah, we have a we have a different one. Maybe we can throw forward. Uh, okay. Well, let's start with running up the environment. That the uh, monitoring and and observability part of it can be added, obviously, uh, afterwards. And just get it start start and running, falling over and failing when every, when things fall over. And we'll we'll be a good long good step along the way if we do that. All right, so that's what we'll do. Okay. Um, I had just had one additional thing that we're going to be doing, just and it's it's related to that uh, consensus. Um, as Bill alluded to, we're trying to get our our, our project out. It's working. Um, we're, we're about ready to push it out on beta, but we have uh, successfully um, brought in the Hedera uh, consensus um, into Sawtooth and so that there is a public consensus available. And we intend to make all that code open source, but we've got to get um, the last T's and C's done and then uh, have time in order to push that code out. So just wanted to didn't know if that would be something that we should be sticking up on that we've got that code uh, on um, Discord so that people understand that it's out there, but uh, we just don't have time right now to uh, get the library in shape that um, the world would be able to understand how to use it. Um, but we're pretty close on that. Um, and Bill, once he's got this out, uh, Bill and I will make sure we get it uh, really should be well before the next meeting um, as just an additional library out there. I don't know if that's of interest to anybody, um, but we want to make that that particular library. And this one actually works right a lot different than the one that uh, was up on Fabric. And we're actually um, able to do it, it's production ready and Hedera's paying us to do it. And we're going to um, it's working pretty slick with their their wallets and everything else, so that you can actually have a public confirmation uh, of all the commits into Sawtooth. Um, I didn't know if that. I, I'm just making that as more of an announcement. Um, I'd say certainly announce it. It, it doesn't seem to be a problem to me. It's a project based on Sawtooth. It's good, yeah. it, particularly if you plan on open sourcing it. Yes, we definitely are open sourcing it. Um, Do we have a list anywhere or any sort of like page that's maintained with just like projects that use Sawtooth or something like that? I don't know of one, I, Sean, do you? Uh, we had... Um, so many of these websites that, that we that we run, they're all, they're all slightly different. Um, if not, I mean, we should we should create one. It's certainly an appropriate thing to put up on the, on the website and make a mark down Discord and discuss in Discord, and, you know, all, all of that, I think perfectly appropriate. Okay, yeah. Um, as soon as we get this project out, I'll, I'll work on um, looking for and publishing out that, um, put up a page and put uh, different projects on there. Um, anything else that we need to discuss um, in this part of it? Uh, we need to find, I think, and, and identify additional developers working on Satya and try to get them to contribute. Uh, because right now it looks like there's three companies working on it. Um, in haste, being uh, that can BTP and um, Sean, I can't remember your company's name. Um, but anyway, we've got three companies. I think there's more people based on some of the comments coming through, and see if we can't identify and bring them in. Um, I'll make a, a point to try to do that before the next meeting, um, and and comb through. Discord and see if there's anything there. Uh, but I, I think that's really what's needed to make us more active 
um, and, and a project that's 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 ongoing and running uh, for Hyperledger. I don't know if anybody has comments on that. Okay, feels like there's there's maybe an opportunity. Um, I don't know how to make it happen, but like when the docs are wrong and stuff, uh, you know, to my knowledge, no one's ever submitted a doc PR before <laughs> and, and the docs have all kinds of problems and we know that they have all kinds of problems, you know, so uh, we tried to reduce uh, the barrier and I think it's, it used to be really high. I think it's pretty low now because it's just a PR against that repo and it automatically publishes and stuff and it's just marked down. Um, so I think, you know, any thoughts about like, you know, how do, how do we turn some of the, I guess the, the end user experiences into uh, enhancements of the documentation, like um, uh, even if they're not, they're not clear, uh, but like how, because if we can't even flip that, you know, if we can't flip that into a contribution, uh, you know, getting someone to focus on like harder stuff is, um, probably difficult. Um, so that's one idea. I think I think the other one would be, um, you know, if it's um, things that you know were, you know, it's not not a company like kind of investing, but it's like individuals that want experience doing stuff. You know, there's there's plenty of the the code to rewrite in Rust, and you know that can be broken down into you know, pretty manageable size projects. Okay, um, let's, let's, you know, once I get my project out, I'll, I'll try to jump in and, and start posting up. I haven't been as, as active as I should be. Um, any high priority bugs or issues that have popped up that anybody is aware of that we should concentrate on? Okay. Uh, any open discussion? Um, the only thing I think might be just a suggestion that might be helpful if we don't have it already is uh, listing out of what we have as the tool chain for each of the projects only because thinking about that docker compose thing uh where you know docker compose to break chokes on all the, on almost all the yamls that we have right it just needs to be listed somewhere something like that we should probably do but other than that no other Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, not, a, not a not a demand. If there's nothing else, let's then we can call this meeting to a close, and I'll push this document up on um, on uh, Discord shortly. And I don't know if there's anything earth breaking on this, but uh, thank you all for attending and. Um, Let's just keep talking through Discord. And Sean, if you could send me the template. Um, I'm not sure where the template is for uh, the report. And I'll try to hammer through that this afternoon um, and um, get any comments you have on it once I've, I've done that. OK, sounds good. OK, thank you all for attending. And uh, we'll do it again next month. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.